When I look at how messed up you are, it makes me feel better about how messed up I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. Who, who put this on here? <coughs> Whoever gives one of my disciples a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple shall not lose their reward. Amen. amen. <laughs> she got a job coming, huh? You going to receive that word or what? You going to try it again? The third job? The third job that you apply for is the one that you're supposed to get. The third. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all heard that word? Amen. How many of you going to make sure she takes the third job, not the second one? You, how many of y'all want what God has for him? Amen. Come on, come on. Listen, the devil gives stuff, too. He's the, he's the prince of this world. Some of you don't understand that concept yet. The devil has authority over this world. Do you understand that? God gave it to him. The devil owns everything in this place under God. But when God wants to take ownership of it, the devil can't what? Do nothing about it. Amen. All of you are owned by the devil. Every one of us was on our way to hell with the devil. Amen. But God in his goodness, by his son Jesus, right, paid the price for us. But it's up to us to what? Surrender. Say surrender. He ain't going to make you do it, but he going to ask you to what? Surrender. His, his, his love and kindness, it, it, it led us to what? To repentance. Amen. And so I say that because the devil, man, the devil, like he, he's already been defeated, but he wants you to make him the, the victor. You know, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, what did he tempt him with? He said, bow down to me. He showed him all the high places of the world. He showed them all of the kingdoms of this world, right? And he said, bow down to me, worship me, and I'll, I'll give them all to you. Do, do you understand that? So you got to want what God has for you, amen? You see, Jesus only wanted what God had for him. Jesus only wanted what God would. So we got to come here only wanting what God has for us. Amen. I don't want what the devil has for me. Amen. I can bow down to the devil. He can give me a lot of stuff. Actually, I'm going to be real with you. I, 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 he's, that's what the devil got to give me. I, I, I know how to use the devil. You won't have to make me rich to serve you. Amen. But I'm going to give it to Jesus. Some of you get rich, serve yourself. You can't even serve Jesus with the little you have. How are you going to serve him with the what? Some of us got to understand, I don't want, I don't know about you, I don't want nothing that the devil wants to give me. And I'm not going to take something from Satan and say, oh, God used him to give it to me. The devil comes to what? He might be giving you something, but he's also taking something you can't see. He's giving you something, but he's what? He's also taking, he's also stealing something. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know who that's for, but praise God is for you. Take it. Ain't part of what I'm talking about tonight, but you know me, I go off in rabbit holes here or there. I don't need this, do I? Just say no. no. But we, we, went, we just went over the three resurrections. Amen. How many of y'all enjoyed that sermon series? Yes. It was pretty awesome. Like, it was like, man, I didn't know all this stuff. Amen. <sighs> right? Like, sheesh. I'm not looking for a white throne judgment anymore. I'm not saying only God can judge me. Amen. Because if I'm walking and only God can judge me, God going to judge me. And that's called a great white throne judgment. And I know the only people that go to the great white throne judgment are those that are going to the second death. YOLO. 
Uh, it should be Yodo. You should only die once. Amen. But I'm going to start again tonight on another sermon series about doctrines. Doctrines. Say doctrines. doctrines. Different doctrines. Amen. Because the doctrine is essential. Paul talked about it throughout all the New Testament. If even an angel comes to you with a different we live in a world corrupted, not by Satan, but by doctrine. Doctrines of devils. Doctrines that are, have a foundation of wisdom from this world. And not from the wisdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Rome was a, was a superpower at the times of Jesus. How many of y'all know that? And before. When, when, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar had the vision, man, uh, and then the statue, and he, it talked about a, 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 a great army coming, right? It talked about his statue and, and what it was, and he came, and, and Rome was part of that. And when Rome came in the times, uh, uh, some of you don't understand, I was talking about this earlier, man, Jesus and the two thieves were not the only ones crucified. They were crucifying Christians way before Jesus Christ. It's a Roman way. Come on. They were crucifying people who killed, who went and transgressed against Roman law in Rome. How many of you like Fourth of July? Roman candles. Where do you think that term came from? You think it's just a coincidence they call it Roman candles? Well, what would they do? They would light people on fire who were crucified. What's a Roman candle? I like Roman candles. I'm sorry. <laughs> think about it, y'all. Think about truths and doctrines, amen? The church was already being indoctrinated before Jesus came. Jesus came to undoctrinate it and bring it back to its rightful place, amen? And that's what we're called to do in this era, in this generation, amen? amen. Not come up with another doctrine that's different, than everyone else, but get back to the ancient ways. Amen. Amen. You see, we got to understand the pagan religion of Rome was a series of rites, rites, not R-I-G-H-T-S, but R-I-T-E-S. Can you look that up real quick? Rites. I want to give you the, defin the definition of rites. A religious or other solemn ceremony or act, a body of customary observances <coughs> characteristic of a church or a what? It was a series of rites rather than a body of doctrine. See, the emperor would declare, this you must do, but you can think as you please. You got to do this, but you can think like you want to think. That, that's, that's, that's rights. That, that, that's what rights are, amen? When you're conformed, the Bible says in Romans 12, 1, or 12, 2, look, And be not conformed to this what? Don't just do what the world is doing and come to Jesus, amen, and think how you want to think, amen? Amen. amen? But be ye transformed by the what? That ye may prove what is the good and the acceptable and what is the what? Perfect will. That you may what? See, this is something that needs to be proven. You got to prove this to yourself, amen? And the only way it can be proved is walking by faith. 
Now, faith believes. Say, faith believes. It's the confident assurance in what we hope for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. So can you see your thoughts? So faith shows what you believe. Sometimes we say we believe God. Can I get an amen? How many have you ever said, I believe God? I trust in God. My Savior, the one. Come on, you sang the song. You, 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 come on now. But now you're going to be put in a situation whether you were just singing a song or it was really what you believe. And some of you used to sing a song. Some of you used to speak in the word, but you ain't used to living it. Showing is what you believe in that trial because you either going to trust God or you're going to complain to God. Well, Pastor, I don't complain anymore, but you still don't trust him. You just don't want to get caught complaining. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. You see, Roman worshipers believed they needed only to perform the proper ceremonies of religion. <coughs> Whether they understood them or not, this, this is religion at its finest. Amen? amen? And as far as they were concerned, a hypocritical skeptic could be just as religious as a true believer as long as he offered sacrifice in the temple of the gods. As long as they did what they were supposed to do, they could think how they wanted to what. But that's not what the Bible says. That's not what my Bible says. My Bible says you can't think like you want to think. Worship stops thinking like it wants to think, church. You worship God in your thoughts. Jesus said, sin is if you've already thought about committing adultery, if you've already looked at a woman, if you've already thought about hurting your brother, if it's in the thought, worship is not in the action, it's in the thought. And some of you, your thoughts is what's holding you captive. However a man thinketh, so shall that man be. Amen. It's always going to be like this. If that's the way you think, what are you going to do to change it? You see, it's proven we only use 10 to 15% of our brain. I learned to use none of it. I don't use my brain. I use my faith. A double-minded man is what? I don't, I use God's brain. I don't use my brain. Amen. Amen. See, some of you, you say, I trust God, but you still think like you. How's that working for you? Mm. Oh, we ain't going to be about it. We're going to talk about it too. Amen. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you said that wrong. No, I said that right. Amen. Yeah. It's vital, man. It's vital. Every one of us in this place, everyone, I don't care where you are with God. I don't care if you like God. I don't care if you're, you want to be here or not. That don't, I don't care about all that stuff. You could care about that. Amen. I just care about telling you what God said. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The problem ain't the sower. The problem ain't the seed. The problem's always been the dirt. It's always been the ground. Amen. Maybe God is breaking you so you can finally hear what he has to say and believe it. It'll hit your heart, not your mind. Amen. Amen. You got so much going on that you can't even think no more. Good. Just believe then. He is good. Can I get an amen? amen. Listen, I'm trying to help somebody here today. You need to quit thinking about it. You need to start doing it. Amen. amen. Then you'll start really telling your mind, shut up. Instead of telling the devil to shut up, you be telling yourself to what? I'll be still and I'll know that he is what? God. Amen. It's vital. What's vital mean? Can someone tell me what vital means? Well, I don't want you to tell me. I want to look it up. I, I, want, I don't want you to tell me. You don't listen enough. You see, you always got an answer. It's vital doesn't mean essential. 
Look, look what it means. It means necessary. It means important. It means what? More than essential. More than. Say more than. More than. Full of what? See, it means full of what? I'm just trying to be real with y'all. You think you know everything. I'm going to try to show you some things you don't know. See, you only know half of the story. I know the whole story. I know that vital means necessary. And can I tell you something? I need, to be full of energy is necessary. It's essential. <sighs> to be full of energy is what? Necessary. It's essential. You're not essential. God can do it with or what? Some of you, as soon as you think nobody can do it without you, someone else comes and does it. Some of you are afraid of being replaced. Well, can I tell you, if you don't do it, God ain't going to replace you. He's just going to put you to the side, let someone else do it, and, you know, do what he did with you with the Jews. Cause you to be jealous. Amen? He's going to provoke you to what? If you're being provoked to jealousy, that means you ain't doing something God has called you to do. That jealousy is because you're not doing what God has called you to do. That's why you're jealous. If you're dealing with jealousy in this place today, it's because you're not doing something God is calling you to do. He provoked the Jews to what? By the Gentiles, amen? amen? Well, the Jews should have been doing it, but they weren't what? They walked in entitlement. It sucks when you get married and you don't start living. You start living like you're married, not love. Like you entitled to me coming. Like, imagine if my wife was entitled to me coming home and I just don't show up one day. Well, she's supposed to be the one that's making me want to come home. Not making me not want to come home. I shouldn't be feeling love from no one in this. I shouldn't not feel loved by any more, any person in this world more than my wife when she's been created to be the rib that protects my heart. But if she ain't doing that part, then guess what? She's too busy doing every other part, but that part, I can understand why things don't work out the way they should. Amen? Amen. If a husband ain't doing what he's supposed to do, we all have essential functions. Say essential functions. essential functions. So the problem is we're so busy doing all the things that need to be done, we're not doing what we've been created to do. And let me tell you something. I've, I've found out that when I'm doing what I've been created to do, I, I, it's vital. It, woo, it's my vitals. It's my life. It's my energy. It brings fulfillment. Amen? Amen. That's why I don't do what everybody else wants me to do Amen. first. I do what he wants me to do first. Amen. Love the Lord thy God what? Some of you don't know how to love him what? It's like a choice. If anyone ever makes me feel like I can't love the Lord thy God, for I'm sorry, you rejecting yours. I'm going. You are re automatic rejection. Automatic. Automatic. You. I'm not rejecting you. You rejected yourself. You should have never put yourself in the place of God in my life. I'm just being real. Can I be real today? You put yourself in a place of an idol that I've been called to destroy. Yeah. See, that's the problem. We got people in our lives that want to put a, we put a, uh-oh, I ain't talking about nothing tonight, am I? You got to get rid of that stuff, man. That's only going to strain your walk with God. <coughs> man was made for God. Woman was made 
for man. Children were made for woman because a woman shall be saved through child rearing and bearing. Amen. Man is to present his wife before Christ without spot or blemish by the yelling and the screaming and the totalitarianism and, and the author, author, and no, by the washing of the water and the word of God. It's vital, man, vital, <coughs> that Christians believe and behave. Say believe, believe. And, behave. and behave. Some of you believe, but you don't behave. Some of you behave, but you don't what? Believe. You got to do both. You got to believe and what? Behave. In accordance with God's doctrine, with the word of God. In John chapter 4, Verse 23 and 24, Jesus says something off the chain, y'all. You know? you got to understand where he's at, man. He's He's saying, the hour has come, and what? Now is. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in what? For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The Father what? God ain't seeking people to sit in a chair. God's not seeking people to come out of sin and be religious. The devil's seeking people to do that. But he's seeking people to worship him in spirit and in what? Not just in spirit. Not just in what? But believe and behave. Say believe, believe. and behave. behave. Go to verse 24. Look. God is a what? Capital S. And those that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. That's not what I said. That's what your Lord said. That's what your Savior said. This is the bar he's setting for salvation, not me. He said, church ain't going to cut it. Reading the Bible ain't going to what? Prayer ain't going to what? But you got to do all these things. Well, I'm not saved by words. You're right. You saved by faith, and your faith better tell you to what? Worship him in spirit and truth. Amen. Let's just be real. I, I, I go outside every day of my life, man. I don't see Jesus out there. I pray that God send people in my life almost every day. God send somebody in my life to do what I do. And you know what he says? You want to know what he says? Not that I do much. I mean, I, I preach. I share the gospel. I love people. I bless people. I, 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 I man, I give them Christ. I give them Jesus. I, 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 God, God, man, I wish, man, why is it always me that got to do it, God? Oh. Think about it. How are you in your marriage? Well, I always got to do dishes. Well, I always got to wash the kids. Well, I always got to do this. Well, I always got to go to work. Well, I always got to do this. But that ain't worship him in spirit and the truth right there. Is it? Is it? No, that's called complaining. And that's why you're still in the same boat. Why well, I got it. Why, why, why? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not you? you know, one time I heard a guy say, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, well, why, 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 why did I put my son on the cross? Well, I got to put my son on there. He ain't never seen him. Now I should have put you up there. 
I don't know the God you serve. My God's real with me. He, he, he talks to me in spirit and in truth. He don't give me half truth. He don't lie to me. He don't say, oh, I love you, my son. It's going to be okay. No, he says, if you don't do what I called you to do, it's not going to be okay. Sorry. Because I paid a great price for you to live to please me. It ain't going to be okay. I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to be okay if you ain't obeying God. Amen. It's not. You can go down to church down the block and get that. They down there worshiping right now. Ain't never worship on a Saturday ever. I'm being real with you. You can go to any church on a Sunday and they'll tell you how much God loves you and everything's going to be okay. But that ain't true. That ain't the spirit of God. Because let me tell you something, if it's going to be okay, then God wouldn't have created hell. If it wasn't okay, Jesus wouldn't have said this in John 4, 23. Listen, the hour has come, and now is, when the true worshipers, see, when the true worshipers shall. Amen. When the true, when, when, when it's going to be, <coughs> when it's going to happen. Now is the time. It's either going to happen or it's not. You don't get to do it when you want to. If you only do it when you want to, it ain't worship. Listen to me, please. Amanda, fog is in here. Maybe it's my contacts. Did you shut this smoke machine off? Did you see a smoke machine in here? Why is it cloudy? Did, did, did so, I just so people don't understand it. You got to be in the spirit to worship him in the spirit, y'all. Amen. Amen. You can't be in your flesh and worship him in the wood. Yeah. I got to stay on this, man. I, man, I can't stand ser series, God. I can't stand doing series. <laughs> <sighs> But I got to worship him in what? I don't, I, uh, the truth is I don't like preaching. I'm not any good at it. But he's great. Amen? See, what we believe in our minds and feel in our hearts, we will perform in our actions. I'm going to say that again. What we believe in our what? And what we feel in our what? That don't make sense because the Bible says we confess out of our mouth and what? Believe in our heart. But, but this is what you got to understand is what one speaks from the mouth, he's confessing from his what? Heart, right? Is that what it says? Or am I saying that backwards, Jerome? Listen, li listen, li listen. <laughs> out of the abundance of the mouth, the what? The mouth speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Don't the devil know how to get you in your feelings? <laughs> He's really good at getting you in your feelings, ain't he? But if your mind ain't right with God, you're always going to be in the wrong feelings. I ain't quoting wrong. I'm just giving you the other side of it. Amen? Amen. I feel like God is telling me to do it, but you ain't did it yet. <laughs> I feel like God. I feel like God. If you feel like God is going to heal you tonight, won't you act like he healed you already? <laughs> Amen? If you feel like God's going to bless you, why don't you well, start walking in what you feel then? Because I see you in some other feelings right now. Yeah. Get out your feelings. Come on, y'all. See, the problem is when your 
believe, what you believe in your minds and what you feel in your hearts isn't based on truth. It's not truth at all. I feel like God going to give me a million dollars today. Where is that written? <laughs> Uh-oh. It might happen, but I wouldn't put my money on it. Amen. <coughs> See, when based on truth, Christianity follows the principle. Say the principle. First John 3, verse 18 and 19. See, we're talking about doctrine. Say doctrine. doctrine. You got to know what doctrine is. I'm going to go over the definition of doctrine after the scripture. My little children, let us not love in what? Word. Neither in what? Quit talking about it. Be about it. But in word, what? But in deed and in what? Truth. Don't, don't what? Don't, don't love in what? And then what? But well, what's the difference? But I'm just saying, what's the difference between word and tongue? What's the difference? To me, that looks like the same, don't it? Word. Word is what you say. Tongue is what you use it with, right? What he's saying is don't just get in the word and speak it. Do it. Some of us love in word and tongue. We read. We, we fall in love with reading and telling other people what it says. But we ain't fell in love with what? Doing it in the truth. Amen. Go to verse 19. Look. And hereby we know that we are of the what? Truth. Uh-oh. And shall assure our hearts before what? Amen. Because you're, you're, you're confident before God, not before man. Amen. Some of us are super confident before man, but man, before God, we ain't got no confidence at all. No blessed assurance. I am so sure, I am so sure God's going to bless you with the words of my mouth. I am so sure that if you receive these words in your heart, you're going to be blessed. I'm sure that's what I'm confident of. That's the truth. Amen. Yeah. But let me tell you, some of us in this place... We don't have confidence in that because that ain't really the truth we're walking in. We want to be known as people that can quote scripture. Our identity. My identity ain't in me knowing anything. My identity is in Christ. He was the word that became what? And what? He didn't just love in word and in tongue. He loved in deed and in what? Truth, man. I am the way, I am the what? Truth, and I am the what? And no one can come to the Father but what? If you ain't loving indeed and in truth, you ain't bringing no one to the Father. You ain't bringing no one to the Father, man. Jesus Christ's way of life requires genuine, say genuine, genuine. obedience. Genuine obedience to God's doctrine. Let's look up the definition of doctrine. I'm a teacher, y'all. I don't, I don't just preach. You can go anywhere else to get that stuff, right? I want to teach people who want to learn. Because the Holy Spirit's a what? I see so many people all up in the Holy Ghost. Ain't nobody learning nothing. You're just blessed. With What? You ain't learned nothing. A belief or set of what? Doctrine is a what? A belief. A belief. Say a belief. See, doctrine is belief. Some of us need to get in doctrine and get out of conformity I'm giving you something to what believe. a doctrine is something given to me to what believe that's doctrine amen 
and its beliefs held and taught by a what? A church. My doctrine is the Bible. Amen? So, in Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2, Paul, well, Hebrews, I don't, you know, no one knows who the writer of Hebrews is, so I'll just leave it at that. Amen. Therefore, leaving the principles of what? Leaving the what? How can we leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ if we ain't in the doctrine of Christ? That's how the devil's working today. No one wants to, everyone's leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, but they ain't never really been there. Imagine you go to a church that talks about, oh, we don't, we don't, we, we're not on, we left, we left the principle, and the, what's the doctrine of Christ? Can someone tell me what the doctrine of Christ is? Can someone explain to me what the doctrine of Christ is? What, what's the doctrine of Christ? You see, that's crazy. In order to move on from this, I, all you guys got to know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, then how can we move on from it? Because I got to make sure y'all build on the right foundation. Amen. See, everybody wants the gifts and the cause. Everybody wants all this. They want to prophesy. They want miracles. They want signs. They want wonders. They want, ha, ah, eh. But they ain't even got the basic principle doctrine of Jesus, man. You don't even know what it is. What's that say? Leaving. That means you got to be. You got to be. So how can you leave somewhere unless you've been there? Yeah. Yeah. You can't. How can I leave Hutch if I'm not in Hutch? Is this hard to understand? So someone show me where you at. Where you at? Jesus, when, when God came into the garden, what did he say? Where are you? I'm at, where, what's the doctrine of Christ? What is it? John 4, 23 and 24. Read it. John 4, 23 and John 4, 24. That is the doctrine of Christ. This is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in what? And in truth. The Father. Say the Father. the Father. That means you ain't running around here with no orphan spirit no more. Imagine worshiping the Father as an orphan. How the hell does that even work? How can that happen? How, you have a father, but you're an orphan. You have a father, but you're rejected. You have a father, but you're... How's that even... That don't even make sense. Amen. So if you still run around and rejected, orphaned out, you ain't got the doctrine of Christ yet. I'm sorry. It's the truth. And it'll make you free. I had to get over that junk. That's junk, man. Run around here. It, can, can, how many of you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And you have a father. Amen. Get it together already. You can't run around here like my dad and my mom, they reject me. My dad, my dad, my mom. Dad, 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 blah, blah. Make up your mind already. You either got a father or you're not. You either an orphan or you're not. You either rejected or you're not. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. My God sent his son to die for me that I will be his child. And ain't no situation, ain't no circumstance, no high nor no low in life going to make me feel like 
any different. It ain't that I'm a son. It's that he's my father. Some of you want more to, to be a son than to have a father. Make a decision already today. <coughs> I, it's not what you want to be. It's who he is. I am that I am. Hallelujah. I don't feel like you, know, you love me, God. I'm your father, man. It's ain't about me always feel you feel. It's about you understand. I know what's best for you. You don't need that love right now. You need instruction. You need discipline. You need reproof. You don't need me to prove me. You need you to prove you. Are you a son or not? Because I'm a father whether you believe it or not, says the Lord. I'm a father to somebody even if you don't want to feel like you my son. See, I'm, I'm trying to be real with some of you today. Yeah. This is called the doctrine of Christ. On, some of you don't understand this concept. He was trying to be a father to the Jews, but the Jews wouldn't con consider him that. So he went and found some other children. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, am I hurting your feelings? You're not supposed to be in them. You're supposed to be in spirit and in what? Truth. Therefore, leaving the principles of the what? I'm sorry, man. I just, I'm sorry. I just, I just, when I gave my life to Jesus, I was done playing games. It wasn't about feeling loved. I didn't care about feeling loved. I didn't care about it. That that. That was the consolation. That wasn't the prize. The Bible says if there is any consolation of love. Love is the consolation, man. Salvation is the prize. Some of you want the consolation. You don't want the prize. How many of y'all watch The Price is Right? I love that show. Anybody here love that show? Man, he, with the grand prize round, you know, at the end, everybody, man, woo You get the one person who gets the chance to win what? Everything, right? And then they all, oh, well, you get the consolation. Don't nobody want the consolation. Can I tell you love is the consolation? Whew. Love is the consolation. Paul, he, he kept his, his, mark, his eye on the prize. What was the prize? <laughs> Salvation, not love. Everything Paul went through, he didn't feel love, did he? Stoned to death, beat, you know. Some of you focus on the consolation, you ain't focus on the what? Once you focus on the prize and you're looking to attain the prize, guess what? Can I tell you something? The love is automatically there. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto what? Oh, only Jesus is perfect. Amen. I agree with you totally. And if Christ is in you, he helps you attain that also. Amen. Not laying again the foundation of what? From what? Oh, but from living works. So you were dead in sin. We should have already repented for our sin. Amen. For that type of sin. Amen. Now we need to repent from our living works. Stuff we're doing for us. Those who worship him must worship him in what? Amen. Who are you serving? Be honest. Be truthful. Amen? And of faith what? Say faith that pleases God. God. Not God pleases man, but what? Faith toward God. Amen. Look, verse 2. Of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of what? Man, we got to move on. Can, can, how many doctrines do you see up in here? How many doctrines are listed right here? Seven. One is the doctrine of Christ. There's number one. Amen. There's seven doctrines listed in Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2, and, and over the next 
couple weeks, we're going to be going over these doctrines. They represent a basic understanding of God's truth early in the process of conversion. When you're being converted, when you're, when you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind, if you don't have this understanding, you're not going to be transformed correctly. You're going to get transformed into a Decepticon, not an Autobot. You're going to be deceived and go around deceiving others. That's what the Bible says, y'all. Because you're more worried about what people think of you and what God thinks of you. Amen? You hide behind only God could judge me, Moto. Well, he's about to. But that's not what I'm living for. You got to judge your what? Doctrine of perfection, repentance from dead works, faith toward God, baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. Going on to perfection. It means pressing on or striving for spiritual maturity. Perfection. Say perfection. That means pressing on or to striving for spiritual maturity. Say spiritual maturity. It's not enough for us to maintain a basic level of maturity. We must grow toward what? Perfection. Amen? We must grow towards completion. We got to finish stuff. Amen? We start so much stuff, but don't what? Finish it. Because we get focused on ten things rather than one. We got to grow in maturity, man. That's where grace comes in. Hallelujah. Mercy don't mature you. Grace matures you. Amen. Mercy have you acting like a little baby. God, you don't love me. And then he got to show you he forgive you for something. And that's all you know. Amen. This is the process we call overcoming sin. Say overcoming sin. So what happens if we don't grow in understanding and applying the principles of the doctrine of Christ? What happens? Does anybody know what happens? All right, let's go to Hebrews 5, verse 12. I'll tell you what happens. Somebody stand to read Hebrews 5, verse 12 through 14. <clears throat> For the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1 through 3. Somebody stand up and read that, please. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy, strife, and divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? You call yourself spiritual, but you still have envy, strife, you're still walking in divisiveness. Doesn't doesn't that show you you're carnal? Amen. But you call yourself spiritual. You're still, you're still on milk. This is not me talking. This is Paul. Who do you think? Who was Paul talking to? A church. He was telling the church, you guys are jacked up. You think you're something, but you're really what? This is what he's saying. Go to Psalm 111, verse 10. <coughs> 
Well, I'm not talking about you guys. This is this is me too. What's it say? I, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? And good understanding have all they that do his what? Amen. You don't do his commandments, you don't have good understanding. Amen? His praise endureth what? Amen. Go to Ephesians 4, verse 14 through 16. Somebody stand up and read that one. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby Which is the head. Which is the head, even Christ. Keep going. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto edifying of it, uh, itself in love. We gotta grow. This is about growing. And I'm sorry, when you're growing, there's pain. Amen? Amen. Yes. Growing pains. Amen? Amen? Some of you want the growth without the pain. Amen? Amen. See, when a Christian applies, does not apply himself to God's way of life, he continually, he continually needs to relearn the basic principles of the knowledge of God, the milk, rather than the more solid spiritual food. See, one who can digest only the basic doctrine is immature in the word of righteousness. Oh, you're judging me, Pastor. You're talking down to me. It's just, that's like when a kid is corrected, what's the first thing they think? You don't love me, Dad. You don't love me, Mom. That just shows how immature you are. I praise God that I don't have a father who's going to die. But I'm a father that's going to die. I'm going to die one day. And the greatest comfort and blessing I could have is knowing that my children, regardless who hurts them or who's not, they're going to stay focused on the prize. That's the greatest blessing that I could have as a father, to know that when I'm not there, they're going to do whatever it takes to be successful in life. Serving Jesus, not serving self. That is what a father lives for. And if you're a father in this place and you ain't living for that, you need to make some changes to your life. This ain't about your kid being happy. Amen. This ain't about you. If you're going to die tomorrow, this ain't about him remembering you for making him happy. It's about remembering him by the example you did of serving Jesus Christ. Amen. Serving Jesus. Serving Jesus, man. You got to choose when to make your kid happy and when to make your kid holy. Some of us don't even like correcting our kids because we're afraid to hurt their feelings. Feelings pass. Feelings change. How many of y'all felt like coming to church tonight? Hey Amen. Some of you didn't, but now you're here and guess what? I'm feeling it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all felt like coming to church tonight? But now this word got you feeling not, not like being here. Amen. So you hear what I'm talking about. Amen. Get out your feelings already. Amen. Children be up in they what? Yeah. Grown-ups be up in the faith, in the facts. Man, I got if I don't work, who gonna how you gonna eat? I'm sorry, my wife feels like she wants me to be home sometimes. But then she remembers the times that I'm home. She wished I didn't what? Stay home, amen? Go to work already, man. Oh, hey. 
My wife can't stand me. I think, yeah. <laughs> Sheesh, I love her. She can't stand me. Jesus, help me. I'm glad I'm holding Jesus. But I got to remember, God made me for him. He made her for what? For me. So if I need to be whole, I need to go to him, not to her. Amen. <sighs> she can't bear that burden. My wife can't make me whole. She's not supposed to make me whole. She's supposed to make me happy. You got to know the difference between when you need to be made whole and when you need to be made what? Happy. I know a lot of happy people that ain't whole. Amen. Amen. They going from happiness to happiness. But they ain't never got to wholeness yet. They ain't never got to the point where God made them happy. That's it. I'm happy with the Lord. I'm happy. No matter what I go through, God, no matter what I'm dealing with, as long as you're with me, I am happy. I am fine. I am great. It is well with my so, don't be running around here rejecting people saying, oh, well, you got to be okay with God then, amen. That's not what he meant by that. Sorry, guys. I know how some of y'all think. Y'all messed up. Got to be careful about my words. I know the twister is in the house tonight. <laughs> you all don't be happy with God then. I'm going to go do my thing. No, that ain't how it's working. Sorry. <coughs> Can I be real with you? So we got we to gotta acquire a deeper, we have access by this grace. Amen. Yeah. Romans 5, man, talks about having access by grace to something. Amen. Amen. Godly wisdom. We got to practice. Practice the word of God. Say practice. Practice. Practice makes perfect. You got to practice the word. You got to exercise it. Amen? Amen? That's how you mature. That's how you learn to discern both good and evil, by exercising the word. Amen? Am I using this for good or am I using it for what? Evil. But if you don't practice it, how are you going to know? Amen. Some of you talk about it, but you don't practice it. So let me, have you ever thought, why are the basic doctrines called elementary principles? Because it's elementary school type stuff, that's why. This is finger painting to God. This is learning to count. Paint by numbers. I'm being real with you. This is, this is element. some of you guys need to go back to elementary school. You, you ain't even made it to middle school, Jesus. Been serving God 15 years, still on elementary school Jesus. You don't even know how to stay in the lines when you draw. I'm free. God, God set me free. I could draw on any box I want. Now look at the, how your picture look. You ain't got a kid. Don't you even, do you, how many of y'all ever had a kid who was learning how to draw? They didn't know what the lines were for. Amen. Oh, you're doing great. No, you ain't doing great. You got to teach them to draw what? Anyone can. Well, look at what I did, God. I made a mess in color. But that's how some of you are doing it. Amen. You think it's like hocus pocus with Jesus. No, you got to stay within the boundaries. You got to stay within the commandments. You got to stay within the love of God. Amen? They're elementary. Say elementary. That's why you got to go, go back to Hebrews 5. Go to back to Hebrews 5, verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that would. What's that say? What's the last two words say right there? <laughs> and being made, who, who became perfect? Jesus. And being made perfect, right? He was made perfect. How, did, how was he made perfect? So you tell me, Jesus wasn't born perfect? Wow. 
was Jesus born perfect? <laughs> Man, he, he can kind of relate to what you're going through then because you weren't born again perfect, were you? No. <sighs> you weren't born perfect, were you? When you got born again, you weren't born what? Neither, Jesus wasn't perfect either. He was sinless, he was spotless, but he had to what? Become perfect. He had to be made perfect. See, only the Spirit of God makes you what? The Holy Spirit don't make you perfect. The Spirit of God makes you perfect. So unless you obey him, you'll never become what? Perfect. You'll be perfectly disobedient. Some of you are perfect. You, you become perfectly forgiven. Perfectly forgiven. What good is that? That's the, salvation don't come from perfect forgiveness. It comes from perfect obedience. And being made perfect, he became. He had to become something. He became the author, say the author, the author. of salvation. Of salvation. He wrote the book on it, people. He wrote the book for you guys to obey it so you can take part in what? Salvation. He was the word that became what? He was the author and the finisher. Come on, Jesus. Go to Hebrews 12, verse 2. I think this is it. Yeah, there it is. Looking unto what? Jesus. The what? Who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? For the joy that was set before him, he sinned and asked for forgiveness. Well, isn't that what the joy that's set before you does sometimes? Uh-oh. Oh, I chose my joy and not his joy. Oh, let's just be real. Now you need forgiven. You had to choose between making God happy and making yourself what? And guess what? You chose what? Self. Jesus didn't do that. That's what made him perfect. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now set down at the what? God sat him down. He didn't set him down from the pulpit. He sat him down next to the pulpit. Amen. He said, you about, you about to go, son. Don't worry about it. Where do you think they get these seats from at the pulpit? Where do you think that comes from? Next to the, next to the man of God. So look, let's go to uh, Revelation 1, verse 8. Man, I'm about to get into this word, bro. I'm hungry. I ain't ate dinner yet. What's he say? I'm the alpha and the what? The beginning what? And the, and the ending. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the end. I'm the ending. I started it and I'm ending it too. <laughs> he's not the end. He's the ending. Amen. When he's coming, he's trying to end something. Look, which is and which was and what? Yeah. Say the almighty. the almighty. Man, he's which was and is and is to come. Listen, listen go to 21, verse 6. Man, I'm finna talk about my God tonight. Look at this, man. And he said unto me, it is what? Man, it's done, man. I am the what? The beginning and the what? Ending, now the end. Amen. Are you done yet? See, some of you got to be done. Are you done with you yet? If he's the alpha and omega, if he's the beginning and the ending, the beginning and the end, can I tell you something? You need to be done with you. Why you think? Why you? Why, why you think he got you to place? I can't do this no more, God. I just can't. I can't keep going on. It's just too much for me. I'm gonna quit. Good, quit. 
Shows you wasn't worshiping me anyway. Glad we got that out the way. God don't want you to worship him in lies. He wants you to worship him in what? Yeah, true. If you're quitting, you're never worshiping him anyway. Amen. Truth, Lord. When I'm at the end of myself, it's the beginning of Jesus. Amen. Come on, y'all. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water to what? It ain't costing you nothing because it already cost him. Amen. Go to 22, verse 13. I'm about done. What's he say again? Well, who is he again? I have, I mean, why does he want to say this to us so many times? So you know. He's the what? You're going to face him in the beginning. You're going to face him what? Guess what? Who you facing now? You. That's what he's saying. He's saying, look, you face me. You see me in the beginning. Hey, how you doing? I died on the cross for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you was in your mother's womb, I was. I'm the lamb that was slain before the world found it. Guess, guess who you're going to have to face in the end? Me. Amen. Right? You're going to have to look like me. You look like me in the beginning, right? Let us make man what? And guess what? You're supposed to look like me in the end, so you can't be looking like you now. Does that make sense? That's why you can't be you. This is just how he made me. <laughs> well, that ain't true. That ain't true. That don't work with Jesus. He didn't make you that way. If you ain't walking, talking, and acting like Jesus, he didn't make you that way. I'm sorry. Amen. That's not how he made you. That's how someone else made you. He's making everyone into him. We're going to be a whole bunch of Jesuses up in here. Man, why are you always talking about Jesus? <laughs> Man, can you talk about anything but Jeep? Huh? What's that mean? What's that mean? Have you ever had someone say that to you? Man, pastor, is it always about Jesus? <laughs> what else is it about? He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. I'm done. You're supposed to be done, too. If you was done and I was done, we'd be talking about who? We wouldn't be talking about us. Uh-oh. He's the author and the finisher. He begins and ends every Christian's eternal salvation. God must begin with the most fundamental truth. Every Christian starts out as a spiritual infant, a babe in Christ. If you are 70 years old and give your life to Jesus, your age does not matter anymore. Amen. I want some of you to understand that in here. God doesn't walk in age. He walks in eternity. Amen. You can't walk in age and walk in what? Eternity. Make up your mind already. So if, you, if, if what you listen to and who you listen to is based off of your age, you ain't in Christ. You in you. Amen. I'm 70 years old. I don't care. I'm 70 years old in the wilderness. Seventy years old in Egypt. What good is seventy years? You guys have to understand that, man. When you got born again, you became a babe. You became a baby. Amen. You are a baby. Does a baby feed itself? No. Does a baby change itself? No. Does a baby walk by itself? No. What are some of the other things a baby is not capable of doing? Bathing it what? Self. Changing its own diaper. Come on, how many of y'all have ever had a kid? A baby don't talk. 
See, in your walk with Jesus, some of you forgot the one thing you hated most about your kid when they mocked you. When they repeated everything you said. You know what I hated about all my kids? Do this. Why? Because I said so. And that's how some of you are with God. You keep asking why. Well, you need to just do what he said. If you were really born again, you wouldn't be asking why. Amen? That's a good point. Listen. We're not born again as full-grown, mature Christians. We, you know, well, how many of y'all have kids? You teach them how to do their what? A, B, C's, right? One, two, three, right? And God teaches us the elementary truths of Christ. The seven doctrines are the foundation. How many of them do you know? Until you have this, Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, and you, you ain't ready for nothing else. Amen. And I'm sorry that some people came into your life and started teaching you about healing and this and spiritual gifts and all this, and you ain't even on the what? Fundamental doctrines of Christ. Amen. How important is the doctrine to you? How important is doctrine to you? Well, let me tell you how important it should be. 1 Timothy 4, verse 6. What's it say? So we're supposed to be reminding our brethren what was preached, what we heard by faith, not what we read. Amen? Amen. Go, 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 go to verse 7. But refuse profane and what? And exercise thyself rather unto what? God ain't going to do that. God ain't going to give you a million dollars. God's going to tell you to go work. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Man don't work. He don't eat. Amen? Yeah. Go to 1 Timothy 6, verse 3. I'm sorry. I put sermons together, y'all. I got to go by them. What's it say? If any man teach otherwise and consent not to what? Or does that make you whole? Amen. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to what? Godliness. Keep going. Look. He is proud. He actually knows what? Thinks he knows something, but he don't know what? Don't know nothing. <laughs> nothing. That man knows what? Everything he's saying is going to come to nothing. But doting about questions and strides of what? Listen, that's why people come to nothing. Everything they have falls be because they refuse to understand. Verse 3. This will bring you to nothing real quick. This will demolish your walk with God and everything he's blessed you with. How many of y'all want that in life? No, you don't want that. <laughs> I love you, Caleb. Amen. I know what he means. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. You don't want that, baby. I love you, bro. I love you. Let me save you on that. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. 2 Timothy 1, verse 13. Oh, my goodness, man. It got serious in here. Somebody had to break the ice. Amen. <laughs> 2 Timothy 1.13, look at what it says, look. Hold fast the form of what? Which thou hast heard. What do you hold fast to? What you read or what you heard? Even the Bible says hold fast to what you what? Heard from me. Not what you read at home. 
If I'm teaching you sound doctrine and the principles of, uh, of the foundation of Jesus Christ, guess what? I don't want you to get carried away. You know what a foundation is for? So the house don't get carried away. The house of the Lord will get what? Carried away. They get carried, man, you get carried away in all that spiritual stuff. Well, pastor, to the spiritual, all things are what? Spiritual, not spirits. I'm telling you, the church is out of control. Everything is a spirit. Everything is the devil. No, maybe it's just you're just not spiritual. You're carnal. To the spiritual, all things are about what? Whether I'm walking spiritually or carnally. Spiritual, not spirits. Can I help someone tonight? Amen. To the spiritual, all things are what? Spiritual. spiritual. What's that mean? Does that mean you got a spirit of lust? Come out! You're haughty. Come out. You're proud. Come out. You're a liar. Come out. I didn't see nothing come out. You're sick. Come out. <laughs> is that what this is about? No, to the spiritual, all things are spiritual, not spirits. Amen. 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 Oh, you got Leviathan. Mm. Well, you do have Leviathan, and if you let Leviathan get you in the flesh, you ain't doing nothing. You better stay spiritual. Amen. <laughs> this is the problem. You want to call out spirits, and then them spirits get you all up in your flesh, and you ain't doing nothing in your flesh because you got to walk with him in spirit and in what? And you better discern what spirit you in. That's the problem. If you ain't in the right spirit, you ain't doing no work in the Lord. The devil will have you focus on the flesh. You'll have yourself focus on the what? Flesh. And the mindset on the flesh is what? Yeah. Hold fast the form, say the form, yeah. of sound words which thou hast heard of me. In what? And what? Love. Which is in what? This is what you got to hold fast. This ain't the last. Well, I've done all that I can do. Let me just apply what pastor said now. I got my 10 scriptures out that I thought was going to work. Let me, I'll try what Pastor said now. Psh. That's a terrible way to walk with God. I don't want you to follow me. I want you to follow me as I follow Christ. Go to 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. My head hurts. Anyone here got a headache? Come out. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Did it leave? That's crazy, huh? Isn't that nuts? You want to know what that headache is? A religious spirit. But I don't care about the spirit. I care about the spiritual. Now, I, I can discern spirits all day. But you got to know what the spirits do. They get you in the flesh. A religious spirit will get you to have a headache in your what? Flesh. So let's deal with the carnal and get you back into what? Spiritual. Spiritual. You focus on the spirit. The devil's already been defeated. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Who else had a headache? Goodbye. Don't lie. Goodbye. Don't lie. Goodbye. Ooh, I felt that. Where's it at? I don't know if I had a headache, but I have a little... This pinging, yeah. It's, that's your mind trying to control what you want to believe. 
a religious spirit. Religious people don't walk by faith. They walk by knowledge. So I'm trying to give you something to believe, but you holding on to what you know. That's religion. You don't want to walk in that. Amen. That's not going to produce the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Is your headache gone? <laughs> Who else had one? Is it gone yet? Is it gone? Man, that was, man, that's crazy. What did I do? Come out! Devil! Come on, man. Is it gone for real? Wow. Can you give some God some glory? Can you give some God some glory? Because I'm dealing with a religious spirit in here. The word of God is enough. I see it. I can see the spirit. Beep, beep, boom, 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 jump, jumping around doing this. Don't listen to what he said. He's trying, he trying to control you. He's trying to manipulate you. No, the problem is you just don't want to be controlled. I want to be controlled by God. I want God to be able to press every button and get Jesus to come out. You ever play video games, brother? What happens when you press the button? It's supposed to what? Do what you controlled it to do, right? What happens if it don't work on time? You start throwing that controller, amen? <laughs> amen. Come on, you start cussing up a storm, amen? <laughs> amen. Oh, you just don't know, Pastor. <laughs> Got to get them off that what? Video game. That stuff will start programming you, amen? Getting the word, get off the word. God wants to control you, amen? He does. I'm not going to, look, someone told you God don't want to control you. That is a lie from the pits of hell. He wants to control you. God wants to press, you're the button he wants to press and make something happen. But the problem is he's pressing that button and guess what? Ain't nothing happening. Where's the back at? I feel it. It's all good. It's about to come. Look, for the time will what? That they will not what? They're going to come to church. They ain't going to hear what they want to hear. And guess what? They, after their own lust, they're going to heap themselves with. They're going to go from church to church till they hear what they want to hear. Well, can I be real with you? Some of us, we ain't going from church to church, but we still sitting here waiting to hear what we want to hear. What's the difference? Hoping that the pastor's going to change what he says and agree with you because you're praying. That's called Christian witchcraft. I'm tired of it. Amen. Don't go home and pray that I change what I preach because it doesn't agree with you. That's called Christian witchcraft. And ain't no witch got no power over me. Hallelujah. I'm covered by the blood. I'm covered by the blood. Oh, hey. Call me Jehu because I like to kill witches in the spirit. Amen. Man. Somebody got to do it. You ain't. Uh oh, I ain't talking about nothing, amen. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't play games with this, man. He gave me a sword for a reason. And I ain't playing, oh, look, I got a short sword. Listen, you look like my sword, Pastor. I look, I don't know some of you walk with God. I did, you gave me a sword. But you don't even know how to use it. You got the word of God. All you want to do is show your sword. What, how much you know? You don't want to use it. You don't know how to use this thing. Amen? So I hold like three of them. I'll be like, two swords is enough. So you got to learn to carry two swords. Forget the seal of the faith, bro. Did Peter have a shield of faith? Nah, he had two swords. Jesus said, that's enough. Amen? Oh, y'all don't. When I was in the world, man, I had. Two 1911 Colt 45s, two of them. Them things was them Joker guns. I had two of them. 
I'm not playing with you, and I let him go. God gave me two swords. Guess what I'm doing? Who's ready? That's what walking with God is about. Amen? Amen. Goliath swords, man. Come on, look. Let's, uh, let me get back to this, man. We're having too much fun tonight. Titus verse 1 through 9. Got to have a little fun. Amen? Titus 1, 9. Let's do it. Now, now it's, the mess is going to get good now. Amen? Y'all can go home if you want. Holding fast to the faithful word. Say faithful word. So you want to hold fast to a word, a faithful word. Say a faithful word. So what's a faithful word? That means a word you ain't heard before you need to exercise and find out if it's truth or not. Wow. I don't know it's true because I ain't did it yet. I'm still doing me, and I don't like what I'm going through, so how are you ever going to change it? As he has been what? Well, who taught you? That he may be able to sound what? Doctrine both to what? Exhort and convince the what? Gainsay. Hey, what's a gainsayer? Someone looking to gain off their words. I'm not trying to gain. <laughs> I'm trying to lose. What's up? Call me a lose-sayer. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get people to the point where they walk up out of here and don't want to come back if they ain't real about God. I don't want no fake followers around here. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Amen. I'm not playing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't need, I, don't, I got enough enemies. I don't need my friends being my enemies. Amen. Amen. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to keep around people that's going to stab me in the back. I just ain't going to do that. Amen. 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 I just ain't going to do it. I learned from Jesus. That's what Jesus did. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Amen. I'm not, I'm not the one that needs to be crucified. I just need to carry my cross. Some of you, you're trying to get crucified. I'm just trying to what? Carry my cross, amen? So the enemy is anyone who tells, convinces me I don't have to what? A gainsayer. A gainsayer will get you to not carry your what? And make it about you carrying everything but it, all the blessings you get, all everything you get from God, but you ain't giving him the very thing he paid the price for you to do. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross, and come after me. Amen? I'm coming after you, Jesus. Can I tell you something? How many of y'all are coming after Jesus? Like you're coming out, like you're chasing after Jesus. Amen? Well, guess what? What if you don't show up with your cross? Can you go to work without your uniform? Oh, you go back to work. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you better go back and go get your, go on back, get your car. You forgot something. You, see, I'm just here to remind you what you forgot. Amen. Look. Go to verse uh, 2, verse 3, I think. Let me, I'll just, 2 1. Go to 2 1. But speak thou the things which become it what? See, some of you got to learn to quit gainsaying and speak what? Sound doctrine. You struggle with that. You have no problem with saying, Sue saying people, speaking to things that comfort people, make them feel better about their going. You, some of you don't, guess what? That is a gift you have, and guess what? It's not the right one. I'm sorry, I'm not here to soothe nothing. I'm here to gain souls for the kingdom, amen? Go to uh, Jude. Just go to Jude. Just go to Jude, one, one. That's all you got to do. What? There's only one chapter in Jude because it's straight and to the point. Amen. Amen. We don't need 15 Judes. There was one Judas. His name was Iscariot. There was another Judas, but we don't know much about him. Amen. But there was only one Jude, too. There's only you know, is one Jude. Amen. I'm, I'll be the Jude if I got to. Amen. Not Judas, but what? Jude. Jude. I'll be the one that snatched you out of the fire. I'll be the one that like, I pull that coattail. <laughs> Why get back here, boy? I don't play around. I'll make you the one feel like you on a leash. <laughs> oh, go to verse three. I'll just go to verse three. Just leave it there. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the what? Say common salvation. See, that's the problem. That's the thing. We ain't, we ain't got common salvation anymore. 
Everybody got their own way of being safe. Yeah. <laughs> it don't work that way, y'all. We're saved by grace through what? See, that's why everybody got a Bible, want to apply the own scriptures they want to apply, and guess what? They think they're saved. That's not how this works. I'm sorry, it never worked that way. Look, it was needful for me to write unto you, what? And exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once what? Who delivered it to you? It should be your pastor, right? The gospel. Say the gospel. the gospel. The church must have a solid foundation in the truth of Christ to defend and contend for the faith. We're supposed to be contending for what? What's contending for the faith mean? Man, not contending with faith, contending for faith. Yeah, we're supposed to be fighting the good fight of what? Faith. But this, this is something different. This is contending for faith. <coughs> what does contend mean? Well, in a sense, it means to fight. It's a translation of it, yeah. Part two. Say it again. Participate. That's the Holy Ghost, brother. When I'm contending, that means I'm participating. Two contenders participate to fight against each other. But if you're not, if God's making you do it, you're not contending. You're not participating. God had to organize a whole event for you to get into faith, and you think it's you participating? <laughs> you're deceived. <laughs> This is crazy. This is what, this is what we do, though. We, we, to God be the glory, but you're trying to get some glory out of it. Amen. Look. Contend for. We're, look, we're contending for what? We're fighting to receive something to hear and do. That's the fight. That's what contending for the faith is. Amen? I'm here fighting myself and my knowledge and what I know to hear something to believe and do. That's contending for the what? That's what contending for. How many of you have, have even started doing that since you've given your life to Jesus? You guys need to get to the foundation of what this is about. Amen. Well, pastor, I've never been taught that. Well, then your teacher's been wrong. My pastor told me to read the Bible and don't let no one deceive you. Well, I'm not deceiving you. I'm telling you what you should have read. You should have read the letters in red. You skip those. God inspired the writers of the New Testament to warn us that his church must have a solid foundation in the truth of Christ to defend and contend for the faith because of the constant false doctrines in this world. Amen. Amen. Many shall come in my name. And many have. Can I get an amen? How many names of churches are, are there out here in this world? Too many. How, how, do you, how do you recognize counterfeit money? Real. Say it again. That's what I got written. Word for word. <laughs> Just as counterfeit money is recognized by studying the real thing. So we can recognize false doctrine by becoming well acquainted with the true doctrine of Christ. That's why when I'm preaching the true and the real thing, you now you've got to examine your what? Self. Wow, I've been believing a what? 
I've made my whole image, I've made my whole identity in a what? Lie. This image I've made for myself, I went into the Bible, took the bricks and built what I wanted to build. But it wasn't on a what? Solid foundation. And this storm that's in my life is revealing to me that, guess what? My salvation isn't in God's hands, it's in my own. God warns us not to learn the ways of the Gentiles. Can you go to G Jeremiah chapter 10? I'm not going against any doc any any holiday right now. Hear ye the word of the Lord, which the Lord what? Oh what? Are y'all a part of the house of Israel? Are, are you grafted in? Amen. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. What's he say next? Look, do not learn, learn not of the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed. What? We got the word of God. Do you realize that every major religion of the world has this claim on it? that its founder had unique insight into the eternal truths of life. Muhammad, Buddha. Who, who's seen an angel? There's, not, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing special about insight. It's all right here. Problem is, once you get off of this and into your own private stuff, guess what? That's when you're in error, amen? I got my own personal relationship with Jesus. He talks to me the way I want. The devil will talk to you the way you want to. That's called gang saying. God would not talk to me the way that you're talking to me, Pastor. Well, why not? He's God. You ever think about that? If he's God, he don't talk to, talk to you the way you want to be talked to. He talks the way, the way he needs to talk to you, amen? amen? To get it across, get it the right way across to you. Y'all only got to bear with me for like two more minutes, okay? Jesus Christ himself tells us that he is the truth not just a teacher of truth amen, amen. go to John 14 6 Jesus said I am the way I am the what truth. and the what Life. he didn't say I teach the truth he said I am the truth amen. some of us got to quit teaching the truth and start being the truth amen I don't want to just expose false teachings. I want to teach true doctrine. Amen. Jesus said, I didn't come to judge you. I came to what? Save you. Save you. Amen. I don't just want to tell you the truth. I don't just want you to realize that you, you might have some false doctrine in you. Amen. That's not my point. My point is to give you the what? To expose the lie and give you the what? Truth. truth. So if I'm exposing some lies that you're in, don't allow condemnation, shame, and guilt to get the better end of you. Amen? Repent. Change what you would. Believe. True doctrine is the teaching that will guide us to salvation, man. It's our guide. Romans 1, verse 16. Well, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of God. If you might, you see, some people don't understand this. The, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, those who knew the word of God, when Jesus came, they were ashamed. <coughs> when the gospel of Christ came, they were ashamed. You want to know why? Because they thought they knew. He said, forgive them for they what? 
No, not. They thought they knew. Imagine if you've been walking with Jesus 10 years, 5 years, 15 years, 3 years. And you come to find out that your doctrine ain't the right what? Can I tell you what comes? Shame. Pride. And it might not even be yours. It's the pride of mom. The pride of dad, this is what my mom taught me. This is what my dad, what, what, can I tell you what happens then? You did, what were they in? What is a family of lions? A pride. Some of you got to deal with the pride. Your family lion. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. That, was, that was really good. Oh, you got me. I felt some of your hearts get pretty good. Why? Because your, fam your, your mom's a liar. Your dad's a liar. Sorry, I'm going to tell you. That if, if you don't believe this doctrine, then they lied to you. And we know no liar will inherit the what? I'm sorry. And you can't see that they ain't saved. You can't see. You can't see. You can't p see past the pride, of, of pr your pride. And your pride is your family. The enemy comes, prowls around like a what? Like a lion. Ooh. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Oh. Your family came around like a what? A lion. Amen. In pride. Listen, I'm being real with you. I'm being real with some of you in this place today. You're afraid to believe the truth. What if your mom ain't saved? What if your dad ain't saved? What if your uncle that raised you because your mom and dad wasn't there ain't saved? What, 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 and, and you'd rather, for the sake of pride in your family, hold on to the tradition that they taught you rather than the truth of God. Look how the church does that already. Christmas, what? Easter. When Jesus was not born on December 25th, because they were celebrating that day 70, 70 years before the birth of Christ, they found historic data and transcripts. So 70 B.C., they're doing Christmas. And Christmas is Jesus' birth. Okay. But my mom and my dad, and this is what we did for family events. And oh, Well, here's your problem then. You just can't get rid of the pride. You've been indoctrinated with lies and you won't allow the truth to set you free. Whether it's Christmas, I'm going to be real with you. It's, let's not make it about holidays. Let's make it about what your mother and your father passed down to you. That ain't of God. The self-serve worship that they've been serving themselves and can't give no glory to God. How many of you got a father and a mother in this place living? And let's just be real. Ever since you started coming to this church, they've been changing. They've been changing. Oh, see? But your pride won't let you tell, tell the truth tonight. Amen? Your pride won't let you tell the truth. Why? Why? Because we walking by faith up in here. And there's a power at work in them. 
And that power was working in them, and they, that power spoke over you, and guess what? It put power over what? You. And Jesus came to set you free from that power. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Spiritual powers. See, I'm trying to get you to be set free from the pride of life. The pride. The lust of the what? Flesh. The lust of the what? And the what? What's the pride of life? Your family. Man. Glory to God. Jesus said, if any man hate not, he knew it. He knew it, man. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? To the Jew first and also to the what? Keep going, look. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? From faith to faith to what? Faith. To faith. What I heard and what I did. What I heard and what I what? Did. What I heard and what I did. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, well, <laughs> mm, uh, let the throat devil come out. Uh, well, can I get a hand? Hey, Amen. Uh, can I get a hallelujah? Hey, 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 Monty's the one that was doing some fake sermon guy up here. Look. As it is written, the what? The just live by what? The just live by what? We're justified by what? Faith, man. The greatest thing you can ever do serving God is walking by what? Faith. The devil don't come with faith, man. He comes with knowledge. The devil never came with faith. Did he? You was in the, you know what's the garden. What did he come with? You'll know. The devil don't come with faith. He comes with what? He wants you to stay in what you know. Because he knows that don't please God. That pleases you. Do you guys get that? The devil will never tell you to believe God. He doesn't do that. The devil won't quote a scripture to you, the full scripture, and tell you to believe it. He'll give you half the scripture and tell you to believe it. Throw yourself off of here. This is not the word God says. He'll get you to test God. <coughs> the devil won't give you a word to test yourself to see if you're in the wood. I'm trying to give somebody a word tonight that they could test themselves. Are you in the faith? Are you in the faith? The truth reveals how to live in a way that will please God and instill in us the fundamental traits of his very character. Only by... Jesus' doctrine, can a person hope to find and remain on the path to the what? Kingdom of God. Jesus said, repent for the what? He don't want you repenting for your sin. We need to move past that stuff. What are you doing over there, buddy? I'm glad he ain't falling asleep, Amen. Jesus gripped the wood grain. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> Thinking about riding go-karts with Jesus or something? Where you at? Who's driving that car, buddy? 
my grandson, man, chill out. Got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. <laughs> Somebody bad, at least you ain't back there sleeping like Nana. <laughs> so listen, I, I'm done preaching, but here's the reality, man. I'm going to be teaching on the, the seven doctrines, man, in the book of Hebrews. How many of y'all enjoyed the sermon series on the resurrection? Yes. Listen, it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm sorry, it, the, the end of something is always better than the what? Yeah. Right? So this is the beginning of a seven what? Sermon series on the doctrines of Christ. <laughs> this is just the first installment. We got seven more. This is just the introduction. Amen. We're going to get deep in the word, y'all. Listen, listen. I'm going to make sure my sheep is prepared and ready for what's coming. Amen. Amen. That's what my job is, is to prepare, to give you everything you need to be prepared to extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one that's coming. Amen. He's coming. He ain't, he, listen, I'm being real with you, he's coming. <coughs> the war is coming. The Bible says Armageddon is coming. Amen. Amen. And that ain't a meteor coming from the sky. That's a barrage of demonic principalities and powers trying to teach us wicked principles of God and self-worship and glorifying, uh, gainsaying and all that stuff, man. And we need... We need a firm foundation to get through this. Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever tried to stand in the mud? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now imagine something trying to push you while you're in some slippery grace. You're going down. That's why I'm trying to get people to the wood, to that foundation, man. He took me out of a miry clay, out of the miry clay. Place me upon what? Some solid ground, solid rock. Amen. That miry clay is, is guess what? It's what you're crying over. It's the spilled milk. See, you're, what are you crying for? If you're, if you're in the dirt crying over what you're going through, guess what it becomes? Clay, miry clay. Amen. God got to put you on a what? Solid rock. Amen? Amen? Rejoice. <coughs> we need to rejoice, church. Hallelujah. If you're in this place tonight, listen, you desire prayer, I want to pray for you. I don't care what.